Hi Tumblr, I'm Aurora from Somnus Cosplay and I'm here to do a tutorial. This is my first tutorial so uh, don't be too hard on me. Um, I'm here to do a makeup tutorial for Snazru Light Grey Troll Makeup. Um, it's not officially troll makeup but that's what a lot of people use it for so. Um, I know a lot of people have trouble with getting their Snazru to not look blotchy when they put it on and I know this is a really common problem that people have. I haven't been cosplaying that long, but through a little bit of trial and error, I've managed to figure out a pretty successful way to get it to look really smooth. So I figured I would just show you all how to do that today. Um, I had a tutorial request on my Tumblr page, and thank you so much for requesting that tutorial. But um, anyway, so I guess I'll show you guys what I'm using for this. This is Snazru Light Grey. And I know everybody has their opinions, Nazri versus Ben Nye, whatever, whatever. But um, I really like this. Uh, it's a water-based makeup. It goes on really light. It's water-based. I already said that. <laughs> um, it goes on really light. It feels great on your skin. It's not too abrasive or irritable. And I have sensitive skin, so it actually works really well for me. So that's, you know, the basics is the Snazaroo. I also use this Physician's Formula um, Grey Palette, which works really well for my contouring and stuff because it looks really weird and flat if you just do the gray. So I always use this like under my eyes and around my lips and cheeks and stuff. And I'll probably show a little bit of that in this video, but not a whole lot because it's, I'm not gonna do my whole face. So I also use some blues just for um, accents since it's Vriska, I really, that's, you know, if you're doing other characters, obviously you can use different colors. And then I use, this is kind of weird because um, I don't really have any other sealing powder and I didn't feel like buying specifically sealing powder. But I have, again, physici Physician's Formula because it's really, really, um, it's designed to be easy on your skin. So I have this mineral powder right here, which it looks colored when you look at it. But um, it's actually, when you put it on over the gray, it doesn't really, you can't really see it. There's no color difference. And I'll show you that when I, in this video. Um, beyond that, the brushes I'm going to use is, well, brushes and other things. I have these foam wedges, like this, and you can buy them at CVS. That's where I got mine, as you can see. Um, but they work great for putting on, like, the, just sponging on your base when you first start using the Snazaru. Then I will use this paintbrush, which is just kind of a regular paintbrush you can get at the craft store for, like, a couple bucks. Um, I use that to smoothen it out, and I'll show you that technique in this video. This brush I use for the contouring and the details with the, with the darker gray colors. And then these two brushes, this I just use to smooth out my contouring, and this I use to apply the mineral powder once I'm done to seal it all. <sighs> Alright, um, I think that's everything. I can't really think of anything that I'm missing. So we'll get started. I'm going to put on my wig cap. So we cap on. Now a couple of tips that I'll give before we get started. Um, work do when you're doing this. I would suggest working in a cool, um, lower temperature, not too hot, um, ventilated place. I mean bathrooms work obviously, but um, if it's really warm, like I'm kind of warm right now, so I might have a little bit of trouble with this. But uh, if you're warm, you're gonna sweat. And while you're still putting on the makeup, that kind of messes it up. Yeah, you're going to sweat throughout the day when you're at a con or whatever. Um, but after that, you, you know, at that point you've already sealed it and stuff, so it won't be too bad. 
but as you're putting on the makeup it it ends up looking better the final product is much better if you put it on when you're not like already sweating and, and like warm um because I've done this twice once was a makeup test and the second time was actually for the con that I was going to and the first time I did it for the makeup test it was really cool in the bathroom where I was doing it and so it wasn't it was nice like it went on perfectly but uh, when it's, you know, the second time I did it, it was warmer, and it, it still looked okay, you know, like it looked good, but um, it was a little bit more chunky, I guess, because it sticks to the water in the sweat, and it just doesn't end up looking quite as good. So, you know, it's just something to keep in mind. I Obviously, you can't really help it sometimes. Like right now, I'm kind of warm, and I can't really do, any, do anything about it. I mean, I could take off the sweatshirt, but anyway. So, yeah, I think that's it. Um, as for Snazaru, because I said I was going to talk about this a little bit, I know that a lot of people like Ben Nye and use Ben Nye a lot, and I've personally never used Ben Nye, but it's not a water-based makeup, it's a cream-based makeup, which some people prefer, but I think that it, I've used cream-based based makeup before, just not Ben Nye, and uh, it goes on thicker, and it, it's, it's a little more oily and uncomfortable, and it takes a lot longer to put on. Um, so, I mean, it's really a personal preference thing. Everybody has their own tastes when it comes to that. And, um, as for this Nazaru light, uh, light gray, which is the color that I'm using, it looks really gray when you look at the cake, but when you actually put it on, it's kind of blue-gray. I mean, it depends on the light that you're in. If you're in more of a warmer light, it doesn't look as blue, but if you're in like natural light or fluorescent light, it looks really blue. Which works for me because it's Vriska and she's a blue blood, so I imagine it would work for Terezi, maybe, Vriska, Equius. Um, if you added a little green to it, it might work for Kana or, you know, Kanaya or Porum, or um, if you added some purple, then it might work for Gamzee. But um, any of the warmer colored, the warmer blooded trolls, I really wouldn't use this. Um, because it's just, it's just a weird color. And yeah, you can mix stuff into it, but I think the blue would probably mess with it too much. So, um, just keep that in mind. If you're doing a warmer blooded troll, you might want to try either getting white and black and mixing them, or just getting a different kind of makeup, because Nazaru doesn't have a whole lot of colors. At least from what I've seen. So, alright. I suppose... Ooh, I missed a strand. I suppose we should get started. Um... You see, I put on my wig cap. I would definitely recommend doing that before you do your makeup because then you can get it all nice and around your um, hairline and stuff and so you're, you won't see any of your skin through the wig when you put your wig on. If you're not using a wig, if you're just going to use your regular hair, then obviously don't because wig caps will mess up your hair. Um, mine will be a disaster when I take this off. So if you're just using your regular hair, then I guess um, just do your best. And just you'll know what your hair will cover because you'll be able to see it as you're doing it so um okay so i'm wearing my breath hoodie right now um when you actually are doing your cosplay i would recommend wearing your shirt because you don't want to try to get it on over the makeup because that's just going to be a mess but um put it on and then put like a towel or something into the neckline because or maybe just like a paper towel because your shirt will get messy um when I did my Vriska, I didn't have anything like that, so I ended up having to like clean makeup spots off my shirt after I did the makeup. So um, I would just recommend doing something like that just to keep most of it off. Um, Alright, I think that's everything. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So first you're going to take your foam wedge, and you want to wet that down in your sink. Don't get it too wet, just a little should be fine. Um, you don't want it to be totally soaked because then the makeup will be too watery. But you do want it to be wet enough that it will activate the makeup because it won't activate if you don't have water on it. So then you just take your sponge and you just kind of dab it on there. I mean, this is pretty much common sense stuff if you've ever done makeup before, which if you're a homestuck, you probably have because it's... You know, if you're ever going to cosplay a troll, it's kind of something you need to do, unless you're just going to do human stuff, which I have done my fair share of times. Um, so yeah, you're just going to put some on, and then I guess I'm going to do this side of my face. I'm not going to do my whole face because I don't really have time, and I'm not going to a con or something, but it, it should be enough to show you guys the technique and how to do it. So, 
you just kind of start out. Oh, crap. I actually did forget something. I'm going to take this off really quick because something that you have to remember before you ever use this stuff or really any kind of makeup that's going to cover a lot of your skin, especially troll paint, um, something you should always remember to do is to wipe off your face before you do it so that you have a clean surface to work with. This is a Neutrogena makeup removing cleansing towelette, I guess. So that's just what I use. So just kind of scrub off your face. Make sure that you're not wearing any makeup already. That's not a good idea. If you're going to do your neck, which if you're homestuck, then you probably will. Oh, crap. Put that back. Alright, there we go. So you're going to do that, and then you can pat your face off if it's still a little damp, because you definitely don't want your face to be damp when you're starting out. Um, since the makeup is water-based, it'll just be weird. That's also why you don't want to sweat. Like, you sweat is le the least amount possible. But, anyway, the reason why I just took that off is because I didn't wipe down my face. But also, every time you do makeup like this, you need to moisturize your face first. Put some lotion on, um, something, because this will dry out your skin. So I'm using a little bit of my just general lotion, facial lotion, um, to just put some moisture back into my face before I do the makeup. It's just generally a good idea. I mean, you obviously you can do it otherwise, but your skin might have problems afterwards. See, I when I did my Vriska paint, I wore it for a full day at a con, and I didn't get a single zit from it. And that might just be because I have good skin, but I think it's also in part due to the fact that I moisturized before I did it. Um, I have very naturally dry skin, so it's an even bigger problem for me. Now, if you have naturally oily skin, you might not want to do this step. I don't know. I mean, it's up to you. Everybody has different skin, and everybody knows what works for them best. Okay, now, we're going to start again. I promise it's not going to be a fluke this time. So anyway, you, um, I'm going to put a little more water in my sponge since it dried out while I was doing that. And then you just want to stick it into your makeup. I used a little too much water, so I'm going to squeeze some out. But yeah, you just kind of smudge it around in your makeup. Now you should have a pretty loaded sponge. And then you just start dabbing it on. Now it's okay if when you start out it's a little bit watery and wet because, you know, it, it's going to dry and it's going to get more solid. So you're just going to kind of smudge it on there. Now, as just a pre preliminary, you can already see how blotchy that is. Um, and that's partially because I started with a very wet sponge, and you can still see like my natural skin color through it. Um, so I'm going to squeeze a little more of this water out of my sponge, my foam wedge. And I'm going to get some more makeup. And you just kind of want to blotch it on there until you think you've got a pretty decent coverage. Um, just go for it, you know. You'll, you'll know when you get there. See, like, that's already starting to look thicker. You can't see as much of my natural skin tone through it. So, you just kind of go for it. And you don't have to be super, super specific or accurate with it at this point because it's, it's not going to matter too much in the long run. Just, uh, just, you know, make sure you have enough on your face that it'll work for the makeup. So, I'm going to get a little more. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk about um, one of the other reasons why I really like Snazaroo. It comes in these 18 milliliter containers, like the one that I showed you. And uh, it's it lasts forever. I've done this makeup two times already, including my neck. And I barely used any of it. Like, there's still a ton left. Um, so, 
if you're worried about running out, this stuff you probably won't. Um, I don't know about Ben Nye. I think Ben Nye goes faster, a lot faster than Snazaru does, and it's also more expensive, which is why I use Snazaru, um, just because it's, it's cheaper and you get more out of it. Um, but again, color issues are kind of a thing, so I know Ben Nye has a lot more colors to choose from, and they're a lot more accurate colors than Snazaru does, but since I was just doing Briska, which is kind of bluish anyway, I just this works for me, so it's what I use. And I know a lot of other people use it too just because of the inexpensiveness of it. So you just kind of dab it on there. It's, just, it's still kind of blotchy, it's much, but compared to, you know, my regular face, it's still much more coverage than, you know, I first started with. But yeah, so that's about all we're going to do with this. So you're going to put this down. My fingers are gray. <laughs> my bra straps are falling down. <laughs> Um, and then I'm going to rinse off my hands really quick. So, that's that. Oop, my towel is falling down too. Let's fix that. Um, also, the towel will be more important when you're doing your neck because you're going to get it on your shirt then. Um, I did that's that, but that was when I had problems. I didn't have problems really when I was doing the rest of my makeup, except for maybe powders falling down. But you know, you just kind of shake it out with that. Okay, next we're moving on to the paintbrush. Ba -ba. Okay, so for the paintbrush, it's actually really simple. You just wet it down, run it under your sink, squeeze a little bit of the water out of it, but not too much. You still want it to be, you know, wet, and then you just stick it into the paint. Kind of smudge it around until you've got lots on your brush, and then you just start dabbing it off. Now, um, I'm gonna turn my camera so you can see this better, um, because this is the technique that I'm really trying to demonstrate. Because this is how I get it to look really good. I don't. Can you see me? I hope so. <laughs> Didn't test this out beforehand. Yeah. Okay. That should be good. Okay, so you're just going to kind of dab it on there. And you don't have to be super anal retentive about it because it kind of does its own thing. Um, but you just kind of, and you can continuously wet down your brush because it does get dry and then it doesn't look so good anymore. So, and don't really worry about having too much water with this because it's not as big of a deal as it is with the, with the uh, foam wedge. So you just kind of go at it. Um, you, I'm sure you all can see what I'm doing. You, I kind of dab at it, but you can do little brush strokes too, like this. Um, but you just don't want to press too hard because if you press hard enough, then you'll, you'll rub, like you'll scrape the makeup that you put on underneath it off. I can show you an example of that without ruining too much. Um, like if I, hmm, that doesn't work. If I do like too much of strokes, well, now my brush is really wet, so it's not really showing you. But you see that? Um, how if I go like that and I'm pushing kind of hard with the brush, you can start to see my skin underneath it. You see that? I don't know if you can, but there, like that's a good example of it with the big streak of, of flesh color. So that's what you're trying to avoid. So you want to be kind of light with your brush. Um, don't press too hard, but you can do little strokes and it shouldn't be. The dabbing is what you kind of do to avoid that, but you can do short strokes. So, just kind of like that. And it works well around the eye areas too because it's soft. Like, you use a soft bristle brush like this one, and it, it's not painful at all like some other brushes. Um, before I found this brush, I was using this giant coarse bristle brush, and oh, it was hell. It did not feel good on my eyes. Um, so you're just kind of making sure that the coverage looks good. Um, yeah. I'm going to shut up for a little while. Probably talk too much. So I just kind of dab at it.
Now, underneath your eyes are kind of a hard spot because you don't want to get it in your eye. Not that it really is that bad if you do. I got some in my eye when I was doing my Bershka paint for the con. And I couldn't even feel it. Like, I could see it, like, on my eye, but it didn't hurt. I think that's partially because it's water-based. Um, it doesn't hurt you that much if you do, but you still kind of want to be careful. Because sticking a brush in your eye isn't exactly what you want, even on the best of days. Um, so, as you can see, like, you can already kind of tell that the coverage is a lot smoother than it was with just the, the foam wedge. I'm just going to take this off. I don't really need it. Um, so, like, it, it already looks smoother, and that's really just the whole trick, I mean, to getting it to look smooth. Um, a lot of people were, like, wondering how I did it, and I'm like, it's really not that hard. I guess it's just a technique that a lot of people don't think of, because, you know, a lot of people do use the foam wedges, and, um, if you just use those, it's really hard to get a smooth look to it. I mean, it's possible but it takes a really long time and this is just a much faster way to get it to look really good and you see how it's lighter when you first put it on that might worry you a little bit when you're first doing this but you'll get used to it because as it dries it gets darker so it'll match the rest of it um, so don't worry too much about that. And again, this is just a quick job. If I were actually going to a con, I would probably be way more perfectionistic about this. Because I'm a total perfectionist about everything. So... Um, this is really just a quick job to kind of give people an idea of the technique that I'm using. Now I try not to worry about my eyelids too much because as you, you know, use your eyelids, blinking and whatever, um, you're gonna, it's gonna come off, but you really don't see it because when your eyes are open, you don't see a lot of that. So, generally, it's not a big deal. Oof. Okay, so you see spots like that where it gets kind of cracked looking? Um, in spots like that, you just want to re-wet your brush and just kind of go back over it with a slightly damper and also the cracking is part of that whole sweating while you're working thing and you might not even like notice that you're sweating but you're sweating just a tiny bit and that's part of what that cracking is um it can be fixed but again that's just one of it's really subtle most people won't notice it if they're like more than two feet away for, or like yeah like two feet away from you so it's not you know something to hugely stress over but it is kind of just a fact is that if you're sweating even the slightest bit it will start to show if you're up close okay so that's pretty good right there just to kind of show you the technique of it so that's what it looks like um, as you can see, it's pretty dang smooth, and I didn't even put that much work into it. As you saw, that took, like, what, 10 minutes? Actually, I have no idea how long it took. I'm really bad at judging time. I would never be a good time player. Um, anyways. So, alright, that's pretty much it. So, once you've, and obviously I haven't done it on the other side of my face, like I said I wouldn't. Um, but on that one side, it looks pretty decent. Um, it's a little rough, but... It's good enough, you know. And if you spend a little more time on it, you can get it more... Hold on. If you spend a little more time on it, you can get it to look even better than that. But again, this is just a quick job to show the technique. And you, you can play around with it, see what works for you. But I do really recommend using a paintbrush like this. Alright, so that's all the work that I'm doing with that then. I'm going to turn my camera back so that I can uh, stop leaning forward. 
I hope you can see all that. I'm gonna be really upset if I go and find out that all of that's like weird angle. So you can't really see it. Okay, so done with this nether room. And as you can see, I still have a ton left. Like it barely made an indent. I'm itchy. Okay, so before you do anything else, contouring whatever, you want to seal it up. I'm gonna use my mineral powder and this brush right here. Um, you just want to seal it up just to kind of make sure that you don't mess it up with your other brushes and by touching it. Um, so just kind of powder that right on there. Make sure you cover all surfaces of the makeup so that it doesn't smudge off anywhere. So you would not want that. It doesn't look good. It makes you sad. Okay, so make sure I didn't mess anything up here. Okay, so as you can tell, I just put this mineral powder on it and the color didn't really change. Um, it might be, look like just slightly lighter, but I think that's kind of an issue you're gonna have with any sealing powder because most of them are white, I guess. I don't know, I've never used one. Um, I'm gonna get a little more over here because it still feels a little wet. So that's that. And as you can see, I already have a little bit of gray on my fingers, but as you can see, I can touch it and I'm not sticking to it and there's nothing really coming off. I mean, yeah, if you touch your face all day, it's gonna come off and you're gonna get it everywhere. But at the end, you definitely wanna use a sealing spray like Meron, uh, however you pronounce that, I don't know, Meron sells a really good final seal spray that's ch I think it's cheaper than Ben Nye's though Ben Nye's works just as well um I wouldn't recommend hairspray because it is very liquidy and because Snazzer is water-based it kind of drips if you get any beyond like tiny little droplets on it um so I wouldn't do hairspray I would really recommend getting a bottle of sealing spray from some makeup company um, and trying to just very, very lightly mist it on because if you do it like really close, it's gonna just glob and your makeup's just gonna run off and it's just really bad. So, um, yeah, that's that then. All right, so next part, I'm gonna do a little bit of contouring and detail work with, again, this brush um, and my dark grays in this little thing right here. I'm actually mostly gonna use that color right there, um, which works pretty well. It looks really dark, but if you just put it on lightly, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna turn my camera again, because I need to lean forward for this. All right, so first I'm gonna start with the area under the eyes, because the trolls are always shown with like a dark circle kind of thing under their eye. And if you just do that, you, I mean, you can do that varying degrees of severity, but if you just do it, the first time I did it, I did it more subtly the second time I did it, I did it kind of intense. And both times it looked pretty good, so, I mean, it's up to you. So you're just going to kind of go underneath your eye like that. And now, I will tell you, this isn't any kind of special makeup. This is just the normal makeup that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um... So like you don't really have to worry about the makeup that you put on top of it being like super fancy or expensive. It so long as it's a powder and so long as it's something that you well I mean for me it's just something that doesn't cost me much. Oh, dang, okay. Shoot, I think I lost the video there. I'm not really sure what happened. I don't think I missed anything because it made a beep. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just gonna keep going. I hope I didn't miss anything. Alright, so anyway. This is just the makeup that I already have lying around and it works really well. So if you happen to have something like this, just use what you have, you know. Um, if not, it, you know, go to CVS and buy some gray makeup because it, it doesn't really matter what kind you use so long as it's about this color. Um, because this color looks really good when you do contouring and detailing with it. Or like about, like a dark gray. Darker than you think you need because it looks much lighter when you put it over the light snazaru. So that's basically what I do for underneath the eyes. 
Um, it's a little blotchy, so I'm going to use this brush right here to just kind of smooth out the edges a little. Just like that. That's a pretty subtle job of it. Um, if you can see that, I hope you can because uh, it's pretty subtle. But it just gives you some variation so you're not just straight, flat, gray because it doesn't look very good, I promise you. Um, if you don't have a choice, then that's fine as kind of a last resort. But I really wouldn't recommend it because it makes you look really unnatural and it looks like paint if you do that. The way that I'm doing this, it's I'm trying to make it look the least like paint as I can. I want it to look as natural as I possibly can because I'm trying to be the character. And, you know, so... Anyway, um, so now I'm going to do a little bit here. Now, for contouring, I don't know, I don't know anything about makeup, but, like, for people like me who don't know anything, when you're doing, like, a little bit of, like, hollowing in the cheeks, you don't want it to be su too severe because then you're going to look like a skeleton. Um, so you don't want it to be super, super dark, but also you want it to generally go from, like, the middle of your ear, about right here, to, like, you... You kind of follow your cheekbones. Um, that's the best advice I can give you on contouring. So I'm just going to do a little bit here. I might mess up. I'm not very good at this. But I'm going to start about there and just kind of work our way down. So. You're just going to kind of work your way down like this. And it doesn't have to be spot on, especially if your you know, regular hair or wig is going to cover most of this. So it's really just a minor detail. But it still kind of makes your cosplay look more professional and more nice. Um, so... Just kind of go with it. I mean, we'll do what looks good. This looks really severe right now. I know that. It looks really dark. And I'm going to go over it with this brush to kind of smoothen it out and lighten it up. Um, so, yeah. Um, about like that. That's not perfect. But again, I'm kind of in a hurry. Um, so, about like that. So for front on, it kind of looks like that. But again, that's really severe, so I'm just going to kind of take this brush to it. Just kind of flick it up and down like that. Smooth it out. To just kind of make it look less severe. See, now that, that already looks better. And yeah, add a little bit. Just really lightly. Um, go after it. Like that. So, yeah, that's about what I do for contouring. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to do my lipstick that I do for Vriska because I think it's a better idea to do a little bit of a male troll lip tutorial. So, for this, you're going to just use your snazzery again. Um, and I know I probably should have done this earlier. My paintbrush is already a little wet, so I'm just going to go right in. Um, you just want to stick it on your lip. Now, I've never done this before, so this is actually just me kind of experimenting. This is based on videos that I've seen before of people doing this. And it uses like the same dark gray color that I was using for the contouring, so I just figured, why not cover my bases? Uh, so yeah. I don't know how this stuff tastes, so I'm not going to deliberately taste it because it's gross. Uh, but it can't be too bad since it's non-toxic and water-based. <laughs> now I look like I have no lips. It's okay. We're going to fix that. But it would be really weird to see a troll walking around with red lips, you know, because that's, that's just really weird. Uh, for most of your girls, they wear lipstick, black lipstick, or uh, in some other cases, whatever color 
their blood is. Like, Briscoe wears blue lipstick, but Terezi wears black. You know, it varies troll to troll. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, okay, so that's about what you want it to look like, just generally, on your lips. Okay, so then, after you do that, I'm going to go ahead and put a little sealing powder on it, just so that it doesn't, like, come off instantly. But I don't generally recommend putting powder in your mouth. So, yeah. Alright. Now, in order to do a more boyish, because, you know... Boys don't have super dark colored lips like girls do. They have uh, lip colors that more match their skin tone because they don't, I don't know, it's just kind of the way it is. So I'm going to take this dark gray that I've been using and just kind of start from the inside and move out. You want it to be subtle. This isn't a super good job because I'm not putting a lot of effort into it. But basically, you want it to kind of look a little darker than your regular paint. Because, you know, lips aren't exactly the same color as skin tan. They're never that way. They're generally a slightly more blood colored version, but since we don't have that, um, I'm not going to just make the lips a little more blue. Uh, so I'm just going to go with the darker gray, and it, sh it works pretty well from the tutorials and makeup jobs that I've seen before. So it's a little swatchy because I wasn't really careful about my lips at the beginning. And don't take this as like a super literal tutorial, this is really just me kind of messing around. Eh. Okay. Okay, so you see how that's like a slightly darker color? It looks more natural for a troll to have slightly darker colored lips than their face. So this works pretty well. Um, it's not perfect, it's mostly just gray and I've seen much better jobs of it. But I don't really have the resources to do that right now. So anyway, moving on. Oh, uh, what's next actually? So I did my eye, I did my cheekbone, I did my lips. Um, hmm. Oh, I guess I can show you the actual makeup that I, ooh, no I can't. Hmm. Well, I would show you the actual makeup that I do for Frisk. I do black eyeliner and then blue um, eyeshadow, but I don't have any black eyeliner right now. I just ran out like this morning. Um, I can show you the blue, I guess. I use this blue right here, this really bright blue. Um, and I can just kind of show you what that looks like and then we can be done with this. So I basically showed you everything that you really need to know, the techniques for the paint and everything. Alright, so I'm just going to take some of this blue right here, and I'm going to use the brush that came with it because it's just easier. And then you just want to, carefully, but you just want to kind of, alright, I'm going to try to face the camera a little more instead of my mirror. Even though I still kind of have to face my mirror so I can see what I'm doing. Um... So I usually do a pretty dramatic blue for this, just to kind of contrast, or not contrast, but complement, I guess, the already blue tone of the skin. 
Um, but I also kind of imagine that Briska would do something like wear more intense eyeshadow and stuff. Um, because she's kind of like that. Now, I have her blue lipstick. I don't really feel like putting it on. Um, but I do have it. And you can see, I'll show a picture of my previous makeup test of this. When I did the full makeup the night before the con that I went to. Um, just so you can get kind of an idea for what that looked like. Okay, so other than the eyeliner and the lipstick, that's basically it. I mean, it's pretty simple. That didn't take super long. Um, and as you can see, it looks pretty good. So I'll show a picture of the makeup test I did before, which looked really good. Um, and it was my first time ever doing it, so I was really proud of myself. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Once you add the eyeshadow, I'll note, um, this looks more... I don't know, it looks a little more subtle because the eyeshadow kind of makes takes the focus away from it. But it's still there and it still makes your troll skin look more even. If you're just seeing that, and I can show you that with... Oh, I forgot something, but I'll get to that. Um, if you're just seeing the troll makeup, then you would kind of think that it was... It looks a lot more natural. I don't know. I, it doesn't obviously look natural because it's gray. But it looks a lot more natural and a lot more like its actual skin. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to show you is just how I do my eyebrows, which is a really lazy way of doing my eyebrows. Um, and a lot of people have dark eyebrows already, so this isn't a super big problem for them, but I have really light eyebrows. So I just use a little bit of the black from this. I just use the last one. And the brush that came with it, and I just go over my eyebrows. I'm lazy, so I just kind of... I have really thick eyebrows too, so it's kind of hard, but really my wig hides most of my eyebrows, so I don't have to worry about it that much. Um, but that's really the last step, I think. That's all I do. So that's about how my eyebrow would be done. And it looks really dramatic when you just have the eyebrow. But once you put on your wig or let down your black or dark hair you're not really, it's not going to look as dark because it's next to something that's even darker. So that's it, folks. I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you can use it to make your makeup less blotchy in the future because um, it's certainly a problem in our fandom. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. I know I had a good time. So, first tutorial. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna sign off for now, I guess you could say. And I hope that I can maybe do more tutorials in the future. And I hope you guys learn a lot from this. So, alright. Bye, Tumblr.